A pagan Catholic? Isn't that an oxymoron? I'm Elise Wells, and thank you for seeking Numina with me. Today, I'm taking you to Villa d'Este to share some of the most beautiful and over-the-top water features I've ever seen. So here's the thing about popes, cardinals, and bishops. Their position in the past wasn't so much about God, Jesus, Christianity, or following the Bible. It was a position of political power. Definitely not so much today, but for hundreds of years, it was the highest political office in all of Europe. Popes had more say than the king of any given country on what could be done anywhere in Europe, and cardinals just below the pope were all powerful men. They were kings of their kingdoms, which could be counties or simply towns, and they decided disputes like a legal system. They appointed or elected officials, and had almost complete reign over the infrastructure of the land within their jurisdiction, like we dictators. It's not surprising to say that all of that power went to most of their heads, and Cardinal Ippolito II d'Este was one of the most big-headed of all of them. Like all good aristocratic styles of government, it tended to be passed on ancestrally, so Cardinal Ippolito II d'Este, grandson of Pope Alexander VI through his mother Lucrezia Borgia, yes, those Borgias, was appointed at only 30 years old to his post as Cardinal in 1540. He would hold this post until the day he died in 1572, although he tried and failed six times at becoming Pope. Probably rightly, as he was the target of dozens of lawsuits from people at all levels of wealth, including other cardinals who sued him for selling church artifacts. And he definitely needed the extra cash on hand because he was one of the wealthiest cardinals of all time, making 120,000 scudi a year, which, when adjusted to inflation, is between two and a half and three million in today's dollars. He put all this wealth into what anyone would, a killer crib. Villa d'Este was an excessively opulent villain, and not just for its furniture, its imposing size, fancy tile work, or other architectural details, many of which are not intact today, but more so for what was outside of the house, the gardens and fountains. Deste's architect, Piero Ligordio, and his hydraulic engineer, Tommaso Cerucci of Bologna, and his assistant, the French hydraulic organs expert, Claude Vinard, designed over 500 jets that flow with nothing but science. These fountains are a temple to nature, despite diverting the Aenean River through the town and effectively angering every last citizen of Tivoli, Italy. In fact, that's a good chunk of those lawsuits. The gardens have dozens of pools and towers of fountains, some rising more than five meters into the air. From the Cave of Sybil, the great ancient Greek prophetess, to the statue of Diana or Artemis at Ephesus, or Mother Nature, as it's known today, Deste sought to honor the pagan deities he admired most. In his home, as well, he largely focused on creating impeccably detailed wall-to-wall -wall and ceiling-to-floor paintings of ancient Greek and Roman gods, and, of course, a few indoor fountains for good measure, depicting lion's heads and other classical symbols of strength and honor. The Feast of the Gods is painted centrally in the ceiling of his dining area, and we can guess at the hubris that brought that on. The fountains are the feature at Villa d'Este, and getting lost in the labyrinthine greenery of the hundreds of pools, the cacophony of flowing water all around you, and the sheer height of the sloping hills into the base of the garden bring the presence of the otherworldly around you wherever you roam. There's something beautiful and serene about it that separates the beauty from the history and personality of its creator. These fountains have been the inspiration for centuries across Europe and even as far as St. Petersburg, Russia. Today, Villa d'Este is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and one of the most visited attractions in the Rome area. Located in Tivoli, it's an easy day trip from Termini Station in Rome and it's also right next to Hadrian's Villa. Subscribe to get a notification when I upload our tour of Hadrian's Villa, my personal favorite site in Rome. Yes, even more than the Colosseum. And to keep up to date on all of my travels to spiritual places around the world.